All right. Good morning, guys. Again, um, we are back, and today we are going to discuss gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. What do you think this is? What do you think gluconeogenesis is? <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, she talked about the production of energy from non carbohydrates, right? He talks about production of glucose from, with the help of energy from non carbohydrate macromolecules, right? She says it's actually the production of glucose from carbohydrate precursors. He says the production of glucose from non carbohydrates. All right. Which one do you think is correct? Exactly. So guys, the name itself speaks a lot of things. To start with, the thing that is going to tell us include there, there, and there. From the name, gluco is glucose. So just to remind you, it's not the production of high energy molecules this time. Is the production of glucose. The next thing, neo, really refers to new. And then genesis is basically production, formation, BE. Is that clear? So basically, what this is saying is that the production of new glucose, and then we want to add an additional term, which is production of new glucose from non carbohydrate precursors. I must be emphatic in this case, therefore, that what we are talking about is not production of. Let me ask this as a question. If you produce glucose from proteins, is this gluconeogenesis? Yes, yes. Okay. What if you produce it from triester? Is this gluconeogenesis? Yes. <laughs> so like we said, so what we said is delete the part of production of glucose from carbohydrates, insert the part production of glucose from non-carbohydrates as the correct definition. So in this case, production of glucose from triacyl glycerols is this gluconeogenesis? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, fine. Production of glucose from glycogen. No. Is this gluconeogenesis? No. From glycogen? No. It's not. Why? Because what? Glycogen is a carbohydrate. So, production of glucose from glycerol, what do you think now? 
Uh, try SL Glycerol's Carbohydrates. Yes. Okay. Right. You know what? There is a class that is learning this stuff. I can actually repeat some of you there. I can recommend you to be repeating. <laughs> so, what is this? Is this gluconeogenesis? I'm asking her. Is it? Why? Is triacetyl glycerol a carbohydrate? No. So, if you produce glucose from a non carbohydrate, is that gluconeogenesis? Yes. So, is this gluconeogenesis? Yes. Thank you. So, guys, you can produce glucose from non carbohydrate precursors, which could include things like proteins, amino acids, triacetyl glycerols as well. And I was emphatic to mention triacetyl glycerols because the last time we met, I made mention that you may not necessarily produce glucose from even numbered fatty acids, right? Because the circumstance in which the fatty acids are actually going to be broken down, you will come to note that it won't be very possible for glucose to be produced. I will probably come and demonstrate that. Then, I also said you can produce glucose from a fatty acid with an odd number of carbons. Why? Because the three carbon moiet, propion alcohol A, is actually able to be converted to succin alcohol A and hence produce glucose. Remember that stuff? Now, if you produce glucose from glycogen, it's not gluconeogenesis. If you produce glucose from the intermediates of glycolysis, is this gluconeogenesis? Let's say diacetyl phosphate. Is this gluconeogenesis? Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. So it is gluconeogenesis. One point I want you to remember <coughs> is that gluconeogenesis is only gluconeogenesis once the whole process has completed and the glucose is produced. You might see in most of the cells where something like the reverse of glycolysis could happen, but it would end at a certain point. <coughs> Say, it would end at glucose 6-phosphate without the actual production of free glucose. This in itself is not gluconeogenesis. <coughs> and this is why we say that gluconeogenesis is actually going to happen only in probably two specific organs. It's going to be in the liver and in the kidney. Particularly, this is going to happen in the proximal renal tubular cells. There's a good reason why. Because these are the only organs that contain the enzyme that is able to produce free glucose from glucose 6-phosphate. So, the reaction where free glucose has to be produced from glucose 6-phosphate requires a special enzyme. And this enzyme is found <coughs> in the endoplasmic reticulum of these two organs. Without that enzyme, gluconeogenesis is not able to occur. Is that okay? The name of the enzyme, which will come and mention again, is actually glucose 6 phosphatase. <coughs> is that clear? So these two organs are the only ones which contain glucose 6 phosphatase in their endoplasmic reticulum. And as such, they will be the only ones that will be able to carry out the reaction where glucose 6-phosphate is converted back to free glucose. This is very important because you would discover that in most tissue, you would be able to produce glucose 6-phosphate. But once that glucose 6-phosphate has been produced, it might end there. For instance, in muscles, there could be circumstances where glucose 6-phosphate would be produced. But the glucose 6-phosphate that will be produced in the muscles would mainly be used for energy production for those muscles. 
must not because this glucose 6 phosphate contains a phosphate it cannot cross the membranes of the cells therefore if there is glucose 6 phosphate in the muscles where there is no such <coughs> enzyme the glucose 6 phosphate would stay in the muscles this here explains why muscle glucose 6 phosphate or muscle glycogen may it be cannot be used to produce free glucose into the blood because once that glycogen has been broken down to glucose 6 phosphate it will remain glucose 6 phosphate and hence not be able to give the muscles however if this happens in the liver for example which also contains glycogen you discover that that glycogen can be broken down to glucose 6 phosphate and eventually enter into the um, into the endoplasmic reticulum through the help of a special transporter and be converted into free glucose then that free glucose can leave the hepatocytes and enter into the blood does this make sense if you are asked a question why is it that mass of glycogen cannot give rise to blood glucose the answer is because there is absence of this enzyme Is that okay? So now let's dwell in and delve in a little more deeper into the process of gluconeogenesis itself. We already made mention that this is going to occur basically in the liver and in the kidney cells. And one interesting thing that I want you to be aware of is this. Gluconeogenesis is not exactly the reverse of glycolysis. It is not exactly the reverse of glycolysis to start with because not all precursors are going to come from the intermediates of glycolysis. Some of them would come from the intermediates of proteolysis. Others would come from intermediates of lipolysis, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is that it would not occur exactly as a reverse of glycolysis only in certain parts. Guys, we learned glycolysis, you can quickly refer to those notes on glycolysis, but I just want to show you some of these reactions, briefly mention them, then delete those ones that are reversible, right? So we made it clear that in glycolysis, you started with glucose. This was converted to glucose 6-phosphate, which was then isomerized to fructose 6-phosphate. Then further phosphorylated to fructose 1,6-phosphate. Right? Broken down with the help of aldolase into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde free phosphate, right? The next thing, this was actually oxidized through a substrate level phosphorylation reaction to produce 1,3 bis phosphoglycerate, right? And then this 1,3 bis phosphoglycerate, one phosphate went out and formed three phosphoglycerate. Remember these reactions, right? They are not new, are they? Okay. The next thing, this is <coughs> isomerized by a mutase moving a phosphate to carbon number two. This produced two phosphoglycerate. Then water came off, right? <coughs> to produce phosphoene or five left. Finally, this was converted into pyroflex. 
Remember these reactions, right? This was your glycolysis in a nutshell and went on to detail each of these reactions. Now, we said this is going to happen only in what we called aerobic glycolysis, right? Then we said in cells without the mitochondria, such as the red blood cells, this fire event can actually be converted into lactate, right? That is in an aerobic circumstance. Guys, I told you, there are only basically three reactions in glycolysis which are actually irreversible. And I made mention that it is these same three reactions that are actually the ones catalyzed by regulatory enzymes, right? And it was reaction 10, reaction 1, reaction one and, and reaction 3. I'll be pleased to tell you that it is these same reactions when it comes to intermediates of glycolysis that will be handled differently. The other reaction